most of these kids and most of these people we have opportunities with, we have to take them as far down that line as, as we are allowed to do and as uh, we have time for. And I think in those instances, it, it's really good for us to be educated as far as we can. And not just educated, but have the courage to go, go that direction where we feel like we professionally can, can provide value. That, that, I don't think that's a disagreement, but that's our perspective. It's a different situation. It's a different situation for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess it also, what we're trying to do is when we're working with individuals, get them to solve problems. So mm -hmm. if we can put them in a position that they can't carry it over to their sport, are we really doing anything? So is there a retention and transfer from what they're doing? And once again, not arguing that what's done prior is not beneficial. Okay, it all works together. The biggest problem that I have faced and run into, whether it's staffs I've been a part of, or whether it's friends and staffs they've been a part of, is that the coaches, coaches on the team aren't doing it, specifically during the individual periods. It's quite frankly a big fat waste of time for the most part. It's just stress on the body, or I wouldn't say the entire individual period is, but a large part of it is. You're sitting there doing these closed activities, and then all of a sudden the athletes start to get injured when they're in inside row, when they're in running team. It's the first time they've done it in months. First time they've perceived another individual moving in months. I mean, staring straight ahead or staring at the ground the entire time. Sets up an environment for injury. Last one, I'm almost running over time. I was going to do an actual interaction. I'm happy to do that at lunchtime if you want to see it. So I threw this one in here last minute. This was at Corey, Corey's conference, uh, what, two weeks ago or so at Northwestern. There's 3v3 here. So the next step is 2v3, 3v3 plus. Lots going on. Something emerges in between. You notice there's four cones that are set. We change the size of the space, the length, the width. We change the amount of defenders. We had them start in certain positions. We then allow them to choose where they're going to start. Why does that matter? Now, as a coach, I'm not telling them where to go. They're choosing based off of their interactions that they have in their team together. It's even more beneficial when you have people from the same team. Let's watch it again. A lot going on. This is a very dynamic, complex interaction. Three offensive guys, ball thrown in. Higher representative design. There's a catch that actually hasn't been sued. There's pressure and anxiety for making that catch, putting them in situations where they're experiencing it. Last time, 3v3, and he just keeps scaling. Cones at his boundaries. Defenders aren't allowed to enter the problem solving space until the offense has started to move. There's different ways to manipulate the constraints. In this situation right here, just one last thing before we wrap up. If I started to see that offensive person as the coach with the ball always start gravitating towards their right, one way that I would intervene, I might take the defender that's standing right over here that you'll see, move them to the opposite side of the problem, and shift him over. I might do variations of that several times in a row. Why might that be beneficial? What does that constrain? Why might it be beneficial for me not to just set up these cool activities, but take this person, move him over here, shift him over, ball comes in, he's always going this way. I'm constraining him to interact with the affordances and the opportunities for action to his left. He starts to get experience with that. He gets a chance to perceive that information to, change, to decide whether he is going to engage with it or he's going to reject it. All right, 2v2, 3v3. Last step is the sport. And then I can obviously keep going and going and going. I've got three pages of references. If you want any of these, I'm happy to share it with you. We encourage you to read at least bits and pieces of all of it. Big time questions, comments, concerns, anything you need, I want to be respectful for Jeff's time. So I, I probably lead more heavily on 1v1, mm -hmm. but you know, team sports in general, there's there's more participants involved. My issue is that I, so I work at a high school, oftentimes in our, more often than not in our off season, I'm, I might have basketball players, football players. But when I, the problem I run into, I guess, and maybe it's just my perception of it, is that when I start to go to 2v2 and things like that, it starts to look a lot like football, or it starts to look a lot like basketball, and I kind of lose some people, like, well, that, I'm a basketball player, and that looks a lot like football. Versus 1v1, you know, maybe 1v2, I can keep it more generic. Yeah. Oh, I, I appreciate that. That's a conversation I'd be happy to have on the side, having a mic going for it, a handful of other 
of time, and a handful of people in here that will reside in our private facility. And I've got a real short snippet of that. I shared it in a group of meetup with these gentlemen right here. Would be to where myself and Garrett is in here at the working facility as well. But if you would enter the situation and have a group of six guys, okay, six of them are girls, where maybe they were four of them across, one's baseball, one's basketball. We would do certain things on certain days to be more representative for that particular sport. And then we might even break off to where one coach has the four lacrosse people or even five minutes, ten minutes together to uh, gain that experience. While where the other is going and they're doing some one v one work for that particular person because there was an overlap, and then we would transition to the weight room. Because we'd always have a field day, always have a weight room day. But my opinion is, is more frequency, being exposed to the information and relevant perceptual variables, the better the athlete's going to be to be able to interact with that information as well. The fact of the matter is, and one thing I'll leave you with, and then I'm happy to take any questions uh, afterwards, and like I said, I don't want to run into too much time. The information is always out there. How it's constrained is how the individual is then going to adapt their behavior. And it doesn't always mean that it's a positive thing. So if what you are setting up for your practice activities, they're going to become tuned to that information. Does that information carry over to their sport? That's what I want to leave you with. Guys, thank you so much for having me. Greatly appreciate it. Be happy to answer your questions.